Are we adversaries or partners? Xi says China seeks to be friends with the U.S. Complicit with human trafficking, Hubei Hospital accused of selling birth certificates. China's new economic overlord overshadowing current premier. Beijing is accused of being the culprit behind cyber attacks causing significant damage in Australia. President Xi Jinping highlighted the number one question for the two powers and stated that China wants to be friends with the U.S. As reported by Bloomberg in a speech to business executives in San Francisco, shortly after meeting U.S. President Joe Biden on November 15th, Xi said, The number one question for us is, are we adversaries or partners? He added, if one sees the other side as a primary competitor, the most consequential geopolitical challenge, and the pacing threat, it will only lead to misinformed policymaking, misguided actions, and unwanted results. According to Xi, China never bets against the U.S. and has no intention to challenge the U.S. or unseat it. Besides, China neither seeks spheres of influence nor wages a cold or hot war with anyone. Biden praised the meetings as some of the most constructive and productive discussions we've had. Xi said, We'll be glad to see a confident, open, ever-growing, and prosperous United States. He added, Likewise, the United States should not fend against China or interfere in China's internal affairs. We should instead welcome a peaceful, stable, and prosperous China. However, Chinese stocks fell as traders reduced their positions following the much-awaited meeting that produced a mostly expected outcome, indicating that investors remained doubtful. Among the leading Asia equity indices, the Hang Seng China Enterprises Index dropped as much as 2% on November 16th, leading losses. The high-security dinner between American executives and Xi attracted nearly 400 attendees, who were looking for strategies to deal with China's economic slowdown, the U.S.'s effort to de-risk some American supply chains away from China, and uncertainty arising from China's expanding security rules. In response to a question after his press conference, Biden called Xi a dictator once again, damping the good vibes. On November 6th, according to the Beijing Business Daily, an online post revealed that the Hubei Xiangyang Hospital in Dianqiao Province is accused of selling birth certificates. The article states that after more than a year of secret investigations by anti-human trafficking volunteers, they discovered that Ye Mo Mo, the director of the hospital, colluded with intermediary groups in various locations, exploiting social platforms to publicly disclose birth certificate information customer identification, and selling birth certificates and vaccination records. The online post disclosed that buyers of certificates only need to provide identification information and pay $13,200 or 96,000 RMB. The hospital will follow the normal production process and handle all truthful information, such as submitting documents, prenatal checks, admission, childbirth, discharge, etc., Two days after delivery and discharge, customers can bring the purchased child to the hospital to draw blood and obtain a birth certificate. The entire process can be completed within seven days. The online post also mentioned that the hospital provides a national version of vaccination records and vaccination according to the normal childbirth process, printing vaccination records, vaccination dates, vaccine manufacturers, and vaccines from various countries including hepatitis B and BCG vaccines. On November 7th, the Dianqiao City Health Commission issued a statement that on the evening of November 6th, a special task force had interrogated relevant staff and sealed related information overnight. Currently, the obstetrics and gynecology department of the hospital has been temporarily suspended for rectification, and the hospital director has been criminally processed. The related issues are being further investigated and verified. According to the Capitol Report, the health birth certificate is crucial evidence for identifying an individual. Still, some people now use it to obtain documents for trafficking children of unknown origin, or even kidnapping children. During a secret investigation by reporters, intermediaries revealed that they had to pay $13,200 to obtain a health birth certificate 
and verify their child. At Xiangyang Hospital in Jianqiao, Hubei Province, only the baby's name and other related information must be provided, and the baby may not even be present. With the involvement of director Ye Mo Mo, the hospital successfully organized a birth for a virtual baby. The health certificate, even the medical records and vaccination records for the fake baby's mother, were successfully submitted to the hospital. The intermediary selling birth certificates revealed that out of the $13,200, $9,100 is the director's commission, and the remaining amount is shared among the delivery room staff. Director Ye Mo Mo understands the seriousness of selling health birth certificates more than anyone, but she still chooses to commit the crime. The newspaper Legal News published an article titled, A Doctor in Hubei Sentenced to Criminal Detention for Illegal Contraceptive Surgery stating that on February 23, 2011, Ye Mo Mo illegally performed gender-selective contraceptive surgery, constituting a crime of illegal contraceptive surgery. She was sentenced to five months in criminal detention and fined $1,380. According to Red Star News, Xiangyang Jianqiao Hospital in Hubei has accumulated at least nine administrative penalty records in the seven years since its establishment. Violations include violating the sterilization management law, staff without professional technical qualifications for medical testing, failure to fill out medical documents such as surgical consent forms and preoperative discussion records as required, spreading misinformation, etc. Netizens raise questions. How can the government allow such a hospital to continue operating? Where does the misconduct come from? Is there only one person in the hospital with issues? Can't we make money together? Do you think only one director dares to do so much? Moreover, this hospital is fined every year. Can it still exist? This is happening everywhere. With such meticulous and skillful procedures, I believe this is certainly not an isolated case. Finding one cockroach means there is a nest. There is even organ transplantation, which is even more interesting. What else can't be sold? It's cruel. Unbelievable. On November 3rd, the Central Financial Work Commission organized a meeting on topics related to the Central Financial Work Conference. Hua Li Feng, speaking for the first time as head of the Office of the Central Financial Commission and the Secretary of the Central Financial Work Commission, addressed the gathering. Taiwanese economist Wu Jialong recently said, Now the People's Bank of China, the Ministry of Finance, and other related units all fall under the jurisdiction of Hu Li Feng, the newly appointed figure, meaning he is tightly controlling the budget. In late October, Hu officially assumed the position of Director of the Office of the Central Economic and Financial Affairs Commission of China, succeeding Liu Hu, who retired. VOA reported that Hu Li Feng has become the top leader in the core financial and economic personnel of the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, becoming the new economic overlord that Chinese leader Xi Jinping highly relies on. He will lead the CCP in formulating significant economic and financial policies in the future. According to the report, his position is so high that he stands below only one person, and above tens of thousands. Clearly, in the eyes of foreign media, Hu Li Feng has wholly overshadowed his former direct superior, Premier Li Keqiang. Former Premier Li Keqiang has been thought to be a weak premier. The most important economic and trade negotiations between the U.S. and China during his tenure were led by then-Vice Premier Liu Hua. Li Keqiang occasionally spoke about domestic economic policies, but had minimal impact. Now, Hua Li Feng has become the head of U.S.-China economic and trade negotiations. New Premier Li Tiang is considered less capable of domestic economic policies than his predecessor, Li Keqiang and even needs more authority to express his opinions. Hua Li Feng holds a position of high power. Still, some observers point out that he is not the economic advisor of Xi Jinping, or China's economic overlord, because Hua Li Feng, who is associated with Xi's Fujian gang, relied on the family regime to secure his position, and is being used to implement Xi's economic policies. Xu Chengang, a senior researcher at the China Center for Economic Institutions, and Economic Research at, at Stanford University in California, USA, told VOA, the only economic overlord in China is Xi Jinping. He is the overlord in every aspect. He is the only one. 
China is truly facing a financial and economic crisis. If Xi mishandles it, the economic bubble will burst, and the possibility of this happening is not small. Regardless of who handles it, if it is mishandled, it will have serious consequences. A Chinese economics professor in New York who requested anonymity also said that Hu Lifeng, a bureaucrat with a clean record, only implemented policies assigned by the regional leader since he took office in Xiamen. Currently, Hu Lifeng relies on the family regime to control the central government, the Ministry of Finance, and the economy. Even if Hu Lifeng is an economist, he does not have the courage to deviate from Xi Jinping's path. Huang Jianchun, the director of the China branch of the Taiwan Industry Alliance in Taipei, briefly encountered Hu Lifeng when he was the secretary of the Tianjin Municipal Party Committee in Binhai District. He said that Hu Lifeng's formal style always follows the principle of step by step, following the leadership, and not making mistakes. Hu Lifeng, a graduate of Xiamen University, completed bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees in finance. In October 1984, he was transferred to the government of Xiamen and began his political career. With Xi Jinping's promotion to Xiamen's deputy mayor the following year, Hu Lifeng was promoted several times. In June 2014, he came to Beijing and successively held the position of deputy director and then director of the National Development and Reform Commission at the 20th National Congress of the Communist Party of China in 2022. He was appointed deputy prime minister of the state council. The New York Times believes that for many years, almost no one in China's political arena has been more intimate with Xi Jinping than Hu Lifeng. When Xi appears in public, in official photos, he always stands a few steps behind him. To prepare for Xi Jinping's visit to the United States, Hu Lifeng met with U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen in San Francisco. An increasing number of Australians are reporting that they have been subject to cyber criminals. According to an ABC report on November 15th, the Australian Signals Directorate, or ASD, pointed out that the Chinese regime was the main backer of this criminal activity for the past financial year. The number of cybersecurity incidents in the past year was so prominent at 1,100 that ASD had to intervene to resolve the damage. These included attacks on the nation's second largest telco, Optus, and the largest private health insurer, Medibank. The number of cyber attacks that crippled Australian federal government agencies or critical infrastructure, resulting in isolated or extensive compromise of sensitive data, has increased from 2 to 5. There have also been nearly 94,000 reports of cybercrime made to authorities by individuals and organizations across Australia, an increase of 23% compared to the previous financial year. Losses from cyber attacks in Australia have also increased by 14%. Losses to Australian small businesses hit by cyber attacks averaged nearly $30,000 in the 2020 to 21 financial year, rising to almost $46,000 in the 22 to 23 financial year. In May, Australia joined its Five Eyes intelligence partners in naming China as being behind cyber attacks on U.S. infrastructure. 